I would say that based on all the information here, there was definitely a glitch with the Sporlin calculating its superheat based on some other refrigerant possibility because at this point everything's pretty much in line for standing pressure R410A temperature clamps are very close to each other and this is our setup out here we got a tree of the I-manifold pressure probes the Testo pressure probes the Sporlin pressure probes and then an array of clamps on the hose itself does any of this mean anything when I was comparing sensors on the frozen sausages everything seems to be pretty far off but when I came back and compared everything on a tank of refrigerant and on the rubber hose, though it is a rubber hose, I know, it's not a piece of copper, everything seems to agree. Does that mean that all of the sensors were basically reading ambient or were they reading a temperature correlated to the rubber and the refrigerant inside? I could go on and on and on and on trying to test and confirm and compare different ways all of the sensors and all of the digital pressure gauges. And I could probably get them to disagree 5 degrees, 5 psi, every different test. But in the end, they are all better than analog. What you get with analog is the needle points at the number. That means it's reading that number. That's not entirely true. Yes, back several years ago, everybody was talking about glycol or liquid-filled uh, analog gauge heads to keep them from fluttering. There was all kinds of stuff going on trying to improve accuracy of analog needle gauges. But you've always got the interpretation. You look at the needle on the gauge, and it looks like 75. But is it? Probably not. Just like the old analog thermostats. Is anybody still trying to sell customers analog thermostats? Especially residentially? I don't think so. So digital is better than analog by leaps and bounds. Among digital gauges, cheaper is not necessarily identical to the more expensive. I can't say that the Testo sensors are any better than the Sporlin sensors or the Sporlin sensors any better than the Testo sensors. They're probably actually the identical item. But Sporlin is made in the USA and Testo's not. But one thing that bothers me with the Sporlin versus the Testo. Testo's been around, Testo's been used for a long time. Sporlin just came to the game. But if you look at the sensor inside the clamp for the Testo, I'm going to go grab one. Okay. Let's look at the clamps. Here's your Testo, and there's the Sporlin. Your Sporlin has a flat piece of metal that your sensor connects to. Your Testo has got the little barrel. So Testo offers the temperature compensation offset to their clamp. But if you think of the amount of contact that the sensor makes with your refrigerant pipe, even a flat piece of metal 
has a better contact potential than a round piece of pipe. If you put a round piece of pipe inside this Testo, we'll simulate with my finger, look how much of that round piece of pipe is actually touching my finger. Very small piece there between my finger and the sensor. There's more surface area away from the, sen from the pipe than there is on the pipe by leaps and bounds. I mean, it's probably 10% of that sensor touches the refrigerant pipe. Even if you could get all of that surface area to actually touch the refrigerant pipe, you've still got a much higher percentage of stuff not touching. So that sensor design, I've always wondered how that is a good idea. That little bar next to the round piece of pipe, you've barely got any contact whatsoever. I'm not going to say that the flat one's any better because it's probably just two um, dissimilar metals connected to the back of that piece to read the resistance on that metal or whatever it is at all. But anyway, this is the final on that comparison. I will put together other videos for other things, but I'm done comparing. I don't think that we need to beat that horse any more better than analog go digital and if you can't afford high-end digital at least with digital you should be getting better numbers now there are some digitals that I wanted to touch on based on comments on Facebook and in the comments of previous videos there are some digitals that are not actually any different at all than the analog gauges. Some of the old um, yellow jacket, what do you call them? The yellow jacket solar gauge. That had a digital display, but it was the identical interior workings of an analog gauge. Um, so there's accuracy out the window. But anyway, I'm done talking, guys. Spend the money, get digital, do your research, get the best digital you can, and uh, you will do a better job. We will have some more videos coming up on the new Testo stuff just for comparison of that with other features, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you.